I recently become a cast member for a production. We were asked to come in and, and introduce ourselves to all the other cast members and to the crew. While we were there, we were asked to introduce ourselves. When it was my turn, I told them my name and I explained that it was Sorry Day and that my story is in the National Museum of Australia and that I am part of the Stolen Generations. Another cast member in Earshot introduced themselves and said loud enough, blonde haired blue eyed babies get more money than half cast babies. I turned around and said, my lord, where do you people come from? Isn't it about time that you get some love into your soul and spread that evil stuff? They turned around and said to me, I'm really looking forward to the fight scene with you. And my reply was, remember, I always win. The director and producer withdrew that cast member from the production. Thanks for that. Belle. Hi. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of bullying stories, so I don't know which ones in particular, but the ones that I, the one that really resonates with me the most, that has stayed with me the most, is probably when my brother, he was born premature, so he was always smaller than I was, and he was beaten up so badly by these kids in the playground that I got so angry and I went down and I beat all the boys up and I got in trouble for that. Wow. But I think the problem with that is that that toughness stayed with me, that anger stayed with me for a long time in my life and my father taught me how to fight because of that. And I even nowadays I get accused of being too aggressive and it's like I'm not aggressive, I'm assertive. So I've had to kind of really look at that in my 30s and 40s and try to understand what a societal point of view is of what aggression is as opposed to what assertive is. And I guess I have been a little bit overtly assertive, I'd say, but I wouldn't say I was aggressive. Um, and it's come from years of, of childhood bullying and trying to stand up for myself and my brother mostly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting, you know, like, because that can be a little bit of a on the fence thing. Like, um, people say, well, don't be aggressive. But if someone beat my brother up, I know what I'd be doing. Yeah, I got in, I actually got expelled because I ended up mm. breaking one of the kids' noses. So, yeah. You know, yeah. We're not condoning that, of course. But then again, no. you know, if someone in your family gets beaten up badly like that and he could have been seriously injured or killed. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's happened. They've beaten someone up, hit their head on the ground, next thing they're gone. So, again, of course, we're not condoning, but then I probably understand because I probably would have taken a similar action to protect my family and let people know you're not doing that to my family. So it's yeah. a choice at the time when that happens, you know. Now, obviously, being a lot older, I, you know, have to think, you know, the consequences of something and is there a better way to take care of things, you know, whether there is or not. I haven't, I don't ever want to get to that point. Um, but yeah, yeah. the great share. Um, uh, Linda. Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm happy hearing everybody's story because, you know, we all do come from different um, situations and it's, it puts a light on so many different topics. And one, one thing that you said, uh, um, Andy, when you were introducing yourself is you said, I didn't allow the bullying to get to me. And so you may have been bullied, but you didn't allow it to get to you. And I think that's one of the key things here is that we realizing that, you know, as I've been going through my personal development journey, I realized that all those things that happened, I allowed them. I allowed them to affect me. I allowed them to adversely affect my life. I grew up in a very volatile, abusive, alcoholic household. Um, at five years old, I ran away and I was gone for an entire week. Now, mm -hmm. if it were up to me, I would have been gone forever, but my mom brought me back home. And when I came back home, I came home with my tail between my legs and my head literally bent down. I wouldn't look at people in the eyes for decades to come because I had so much fear of people. And it was from my dad, the abuse that I you know, lived in that household. So my bullying was in the household. It happened outside of the household too, but the amount of it that happened inside the house was so 
it's just so instrumental as to who I became. And I mm. became this scared person. So I ran away. I was strong and brave at five, but I came home fearful, fearful for my life. I attempted suicide also like Amy did at about, uh, I think I was seventh grade at the time. And the, the, the method that I tried to use was not going to work. It just wasn't going to work, but I had so much anger that I wanted to do it. You know, I wanted mm. it to work, but it, phys- it was physically impossible for the method that I was using to kill me. It was impossible. Mm. But, and so as I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? I mean, that was so, like, I was going to kill myself with my brush. Okay. I'll just tell you what it was. I thought I could, I could beat my head enough that I could actually kill myself. It was not going to happen. Wow. And so as I went through my years, you know, living with that pain and that misery and that anger and just so much fear, you know, at age 51 is when I hired a life coach and she was the one that helped me to see that I have value. I didn't know it for all these decades. And she's the one who opened my eyes to possibilities and to who I possibly can become. And then I've been on this journey to become that person. And it's been an incredible journey, absolutely incredible. And I don't know that I could have gone through it without having those experiences, you know? So I think that those experiences are important for us in order for us to be able to relate to other people or other people to be able to relate to us so that we can pull them out of that also have them see there's hope, have them see that there is possible to become sunshine at age four, you know, 54 is when I became known as sunshine. And Mm. so it's, um, life is definitely an interesting journey. And one thing I have realized is when you said that Andy, it was really a big deal for me because I realized that I had been spending my whole life blaming others for my circumstances. I never mm-hmm. took responsibility. Once I started taking responsibility, everything started shifting. It was a slow yeah. process. It's been, I'm still in the process. Yeah. But cool. It's incredible though. But that's, yeah, that's a great, I mean, everyone's stories is great because this is the, the idea of, and when, you know, we continue these on, people will be relating to everyone's different story. And, you know, again, what you just said then, um, uh, my circumstance was just a moment in life where I, I don't know how you ran away at five, like that just blew my mind, like five, like, gosh, where do you go at five? Um, that's, wow, that's how, that's how intense the pain is and you want to run away from it. Like, you know, um, I was probably four years old when I got smacked by my dad for breaking a coffee table. And uh, my sister, who's five years older than me, stepped in and said he didn't break it. She said he didn't. I know how it got broken. And uh, I, I did the same thing as Amy a few years ago, six, seven years ago. I did Landmark and I'm an introduction leader there now. And that truly helped me see that I, it wasn't what my dad was doing. Of course, getting smacked, he wasn't beating me, just smacking me. But that little moment when, oh, you will never do that again. And I, from that time on, even though I might not have subconsciously thought that, subconsciously it was there because then I blamed him for everything. And we had a pretty good family. But yes, there was arguments with mum and dad. But any authority, the minute anyone pointed a finger at me and said, even a cop would pull me over, the first thing came out of my mouth, what do you want? He goes, well, I said, what do you want? What do I do? Like straight away, he hadn't even opened his mouth. He just wanted to tell me one of my taillights was out. I said, you got nothing better to do? Oh, I just got worse. It, that was my whole life. Anything I was not, I didn't think I'd done wrong, bang, I'm off. So you're right. I had to take responsibility for that. And I got out of the course I did seeing that it was got nothing to do with anyone else. Regardless what they were doing, it was my reaction and my choice to do what I did so you went to 51 I went to 65 or 64 before I I actually started seeing that um so yeah it's um it's it's an incredible thing and sadly there's a couple of people on our group here uh who've lost children through they haven't been able to get through that and one of my friends I was talking to the other day um they don't know why they still don't know why 12 months ago they found her in a bedroom. She was 17. She was going to college. Everything was great. Everything perfect. And he wrote to me the other day when I added him to this group and he said, Andy, he said, thank you for adding me. It's just, uh, he said, it's just wonderful that there's people we can talk to and share. He said, but we break down and cry 
three or four times a week, 12 months in, we still don't know why. There was no letter. There was no – so it's just terrible when young – anyone takes their own life, especially young children, when that should not be happening. Um, and most of them have happened through bullying um, from the friends I have on here. Uh, Matt Runnels uh, and Troy Coward and uh, Mel Yu, they all have non-profits for mental health and suicide awareness and prevention in Australia. And um, they're doing their best, you know, to, to bring that message. We're doing our best here. And, um, you know, we are running out of time now, but this is great because we are going to continue this over the next few months to get deeper into these stories and more about how you dealt with it. And if you have any, um, you know, advice for resources that people can go to to get help, because obviously we're not qualified to tell people what to do, but if we have anything that we can pass on to people, that's our aim. And once we get Matt and the other guys on from Australia, um, to be able to help and Jerry Trimble, who does a lot of work in Canada. He runs uh, anti-bullying um, sessions for kids in schools. He used to work with the LAPD. He's an actor. So he's a big advocate for helping street kids, helping kids in homes. So we've got, we've got an incredible uh, amount of people on here. Um, Daniel Reader in Australia, uh, he's, he works with, um, he was in the military. He helps, you know, guys in the military. We've got another gentleman, Nick Barkler, who's just completed a documentary on horse therapy, you can check out the interview on here for the viewers and you guys. What those the horse therapy is doing for veterans is absolutely incredible. It's just amazing how that's, and I think I think that can actually help people who've been bullied as well. Um, yeah. in the horse therapy, and you know, I don't want to keep going into a dark path, but one of the veterans there that was in the course for over three years. He didn't say much, and then the guy who runs the course, not a therapist, he just knows horses back to front, and he knows horses can help heal people uh, with post-traumatic stress, etc. And one of the guys never talked much, and he asked him, why don't you say much? He goes, he said, look, this was hard for me. He said, I dug a grave for myself before I came to this course in the bush, and he said, if this didn't work, that's where I was going. And three years later, that grave is filled in with dirt and not him. So this this is really powerful stuff. And the guy just broke down and started crying. He said, oh, my God. He said, so your horses have saved my life and the therapy. So I know there's a lot of things, and it's it's a hard topic to, to talk about, but it is real, it is happening, and we all really, truly do want to, you know, try and make a difference um, in, in this in this entire world that these you know these uh, interviews go out to and it is making a difference slowly and it, it's only with the help of you guys and everyone else we have on like you know that's what makes the difference so um i just want to thank everybody uh we are completing now but we just letting everyone know we are getting you back on again and we're going to extend the sessions a lot longer so we can get into more conversation about it so uh, and I'm sorry, uh, Linda, I didn't get to your book, but Doug, we'll put your book up on here so the viewers can check it out and read everybody's stories in there from these women that have uh, contributed to your book. So thanks, everybody, uh, Sally, Amy, and Belle, and Linda, and Doug, appreciate you all. Thank you, man. And we thank you all for appearing on the channel, everyone. We know that your stories will impact this world and everyone's stories will on our channel. We thank all who has appeared on Relentless this year and happy holidays. Hi, my name is Cameron Miller and I'm the director and founder of the Sean Miller Foundation. I just wanna talk a little bit about bullying because I know a little bit about that subject. I too was a victim of bullying. I was a victim of bullying in my teenage years and I became a target because of my size and uh, I was suffering from bad asthma. Not only with bullies do they affect you mentally, physically, but they also affect your schoolwork. And I don't think anyone has the right to affect your schoolwork. And all bullies need to stamp it out right now. I was bullied for a very, very long time to the point where I was thrown off a moving train because I wasn't hitting back at the bullies. 
because that's what they want you to do. They want you to react. They want you to hit back, right? That's what bullies do. They bully because they want you to hit back. And then they pushed me so, so far that I did hit back in the end. And I heard I heard a guy really, really bad. I got into an argument and a fight, fist fight, and I broke both his eye sockets. I wasn't I wasn't proud of what I did. I got suspended for it for a couple of weeks. But that's what bullies do, they push you to the brink. Uh, you know, and that needs to stop. So I too have been bullied in my life. And I just wish that bullies out there would just stop. Because you don't know when it's going to come back on you and hurt you. So that's one thing you need to take, take, take care right now. And think about before you bully your next target. Is your next target going to hurt you more than you hurt them? And that's my story.